episode three of the official Harry Knit podcast. Hey! <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Bash Harry and this is the Harry Knit. Over here we do knitting content so please do subscribe if you like that stuff. We've got the third episode of the Harry Knit podcast. We talk about finished objects, whips, and any yarn haul needle notion purchases that I've accumulated over January, which I don't want to say was a lot, but I, in the last podcast, I said I wasn't going to buy um, yarn anymore. That did not work. I have a tendency to do that, say one thing, but then end up doing the other. Uh, we're going to talk about it. But first, I want to talk about the finished objects of 2022. So like my first ever finished object. We're, we're going to do that. And then we'll do all the whips and things I've been doing, hopefully finished before the end of January. The first thing that I finish, and she's a beauty, she's a cutie. She was made with so much love. It is the Thin Air sweater by lily kate makes so what's so unique about this specific sweater is that the sleeves are kind of cuffed like this so you knit it kind of like the original length like this and then you flip it around and knit the cuff section and then you knit everything up together. I did the sleeves in two different colors because <laughs> I wanted it to be like a two-tone. I wanted it to be contrasting colors because I thought it would be a really, really cool idea. And honestly, I do not regret it. I think it looks absolutely magnificent. This project took me, I want to say like a month and a half. I started it around December 9th. Swatch the yarn that I use, which is the Wendy Wool's Peter Pan DK. And then it took me about a month and a half to finish everything because I took breaks because I was doing other test knits as well. And overall, I'm so happy with it. I think the longest portion of the project was the yoke and it is such a deep yoke because the vertical gauge is actually very important for this. Um, for this sweater, I actually think uh, vertical gauge is more important than the like um than the stitches because this one is designed to be a very wide, deep version, but it shouldn't be too deep. And then the sleeves, I think, are a bit longer than intended. This is supposed to be three point five inches, I think, but ended up being four. And so the sleeves are much longer, and the V neck is also quite deep. So I have to wear like a tank top underneath if I were to wear it out. I haven't yet because it is very warm because the wool, the yarn is nylon acrylic for babies and it is really soft, but it is also extremely hot to wear. So I don't know when I'm going to wear this just yet, but I think it's really, really pretty. The one thing I'd say is from a personal note, I wish I chose a different color. Don't get me wrong, I think the white is so beautiful, especially with the contrasting sleeves. The problem is, because it's white, I am so scared that it's gonna stain. And like, you can't see it, but like you can see the bubbles here. That's kind of like picking up some debris, like my hair, and it's noticeable to me. So I'm worried that with the white yarn, it's just going to stain. Uh, so I have to be careful about that. My hair is weird today. We're going to keep it that way. So that is my one concern. This is a test knit. So by the time that this video is out, the pattern should be out. So I'll link it down below for the Ravelry page. And I'm so happy that this is like my first ever finished object of 2022. I think I've mentioned in the last podcast like i i've known lily for quite a while like we we went back as blogging buddies back in the day when we were teens so it was really fun to finally work on one of her projects as a knitter and she has has such incredible designs i really want to make the either the be thankful cardigan or the avonham cardigan 
but I think for the type of weather that I have and the yarn that I have in my stash, it would likely be the Evanham, Evanham cardigan. But instead of the mohair, I think I'm just gonna do the puff sleeves because that would be so cute. I'm getting really into puff sleeves this year. You'll see with my other whip that I have. Yeah, this is my first finished object. I also really like, and it's very subtle, but I really love the ribbing here because you have to do a purl row and then you do the ribbing and then you bind off. And I think it's just such a nice clean design with the ribbing. I don't really see that a lot in um, other patterns that I've worked on. So I might actually incorporate that into other projects that I'm doing in the future where they might not say to do a purl, but I'm gonna do a purl anyway. So this is my first sweater FO of 2022. Would I change anything about it? Probably not because it was a test knit. I wanted it to be as close to the original um, pattern as possible because I, I don't want to make any mods to the designer out of respect. So I didn't do any mods apart from the sleeves because the doubles, when I double stranded it, Originally, this is Sheep Jess Katona in Midnight. The other one is Topaz. So this one, originally it says to knit up to, I think, 30 rounds or something like that and flip it. But with I did it in 30 rounds, it would have ended up being 4.5 instead of the original size of, you know, the sleeve here. So I had to pull back a few um, rows so I could meet gauge for it. So that was the only mod I did just so I would have a nice cuff sleeves. But other than that, I kept it mostly consistent. One thing I wanna show you, I don't know if I could show you and I don't know if you can tell, but I just love the way that the arms are going. So there's a few, you can see the hole there, but there's, um, there's some decreases around the edge here. So it's a very clean line. And I don't remember if that ever happened in other patterns that I use. I can't remember. I thought it was just a nice, clean, intricate design. I really love making v-neck sweaters, even though I think I've only made like two. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've only made like two v-neck sweaters. And I honestly sometimes get really overwhelmed with them. But this was a nice one and it didn't take too long all things considered this is a big boy she used 3.5 millimeters so you know when you work on projects with smaller needles they do take a long time especially when it ends up being big like this but ultimately super happy with it so the next project that i want to show you is the one that i'm wearing right now i'm hoping that it will be out on the pattern will be out it is the orbital jumper by runty visuals just let's get a little bit of commotion i'm wearing a singlet but she wears a bra originally in her photo and i absolutely love it i thought wow this is such a unique design because she used aran and um, mohair to give all these like very unique stripe details so you see here the shirt is pretty opaque and then when you get to the mohair it's translucent transparent and then you go move on and so it gives a lot of details um i used so <laughs> when i got offered or got accepted into the test knit i thought that i had the yarn for it i thought i had the specific yarn for the body this portion and then i swatched it and i was like oh no this is not going to work it's not going to work at all and I didn't really want to use any of the Aran that I had, so I went to the store and I bought some milk cotton from Hoko. That's this one. Uh, and I hit gauge. This is 10 stitches by one, by like four. So I hit gauge on it. Um, and the mohair I also got from Hoko as well, but the mohair didn't really matter. Gauge actually doesn't really matter in this pattern either. But once I did it and I did the body, it ended up being way bigger. So the sleeve is actually here, where it's intended to probably be around this area. So it's very, very big for what it's worth. I think the rows are much bigger than intended. 
Uh, it is worked up on big needles. I think it's about 10 millimeters. Uh, that's why I bought it in the last video. But overall, like as a pattern, I absolutely love it. I, I just love everything I make. <laughs> no, if I'm, I'm, I love everything that I see on Instagram and I, I immediately want to try it on, especially if it's something that I, I haven't seen before or it's something that I know I'm going to get a lot of wear out of that's very unique. I've worn this one outside, took some photos, very nice photos. I wore a long sleeve shirt though. This is how it looks like. I The one thing I would do differently, I guess, would have been to account for the vertical rows. Like I said, this was very big here, so it's pretty cropped. So I bind it off after a couple of inches, I think one or two, not too much, just so it looked nice when I was walking around. I think I would have just accommodated for the vertical gauge. I might do another one, to be honest, uh, or make a... I want to say I want to make like a fingering version of it because it does have... It's so cool, it's so interesting, and it's definitely something that I would not see outside, which is why I love it so much. Like I, I can't talk about how much I love unique pieces, how much I want something that brings me joy. I think lately, over the past month, I was thinking about my wardrobe and I was thinking, okay, what do I really wear? But not just that, what are the clothes that bring me joy? What are the clothes that make me have fun and enjoy my closet? Uh, and a lot of it is not black. It is fun, funky colors that surprisingly I do have a few, but I don't know how to style them well enough. So something like this was definitely a piece that I wanted to have so I can style it in different ways. I'm even wearing like these <laughs> gingham trousers, uh, which I know mixing prints is like maybe not the greatest for some people, but I personally love it because it is so much fun and I just I wanted to make clothes that were one fun and two something that brings me joy so you know the same things as everyone else uh, and I think that's what I want to do this year is to experiment with different um, fibers I want to experiment with different types of clothes that you can make out of knitting because uh, most people think it's just sweaters or cardigans or grandma stuff and it's like no you can make so many unique stuff like the orbital jumper by Ronti. It should be out now. It will be linked down below. Every pattern that I mention unless it's a test knit will be linked down below. Very happy with this one. I don't I wish okay the one thing I will do and it was a part of my own fault is that I wish I didn't use unbranded uh, yarn because it didn't have the yardage exactly. I had to um, do some approximates using math and I'm bad at math. Those were my finished objects of January 2022, which I'm so glad I did say I wanted to make like 22 pieces for 2022 and I think I'm on that goal. Sorry, that was a hair. <laughs> I, I think I'm on the way to achieving that. Uh, it's too early to tell considering it's only January, but I like to say I'm off to a good start. Let's move on to works in progress. I think I'm going for like a 70s renaissance aesthetic right now, like just 70s inspired kind of big chunky earrings, big poofy sweaters. I like it. I like the vibe. Anyway, this one, so beautiful, so amazing was so excited that I got accepted to the test knit because I love her YouTube videos but also her designs and this is the Daphne top by Friday Knits didn't I tell you I love poofy sleeves I just I want all the poofy sleeves this feels like a Bridgerton-esque outfit because of the A-line using I-cord here and the poofy sleeves. This is using Drops Design Extra Fine Merino in DK. So I mentioned it in like the last podcast that I didn't have the yarn that I was looking for to make the top. So I wanted to use 100% merino. So I got the Drops one because it's the only one that I know I could afford. And it is beautiful. 
I think this, all things considered, was a pretty fast test knit since I started it maybe the second week of January and I only have one more sleeve to go. I'm hoping that I can power through this weekend and just finish everything up, which is the plan, which is the, which is the plan. Ultimately though, I did have an issue with the sleeve because I think because it uses I-cord, I don't know how much I can talk about it, but because I'm using I-cord, it twisted and that's an issue. So you have to be very careful when counting the sleeves and it was my first time doing this sort of hemming. Yeah, it was my first time doing this sort of hem. And I'm not going to lie, I really love it. Uh, now that I've mastered how to do it, I might do it with other projects because I just, I love a good crisp line. Like if I can make my knitting look like normal clothes, perfect, amazing. We'll continue to do that for the life of me. I'm so excited to finish the sleeve and I really want it done for Valentine's Day so I have something nice that I could wear. Something like this though, I don't know about you but I'm somebody who, I wouldn't say I'm like someone who's like completely covered up but there are some bits that I don't enjoy showing. So this one has a pretty cleavage e thing. It's very cleavagey, and so it looks so beautiful on all the girls that have finished it. I personally would wear a turtleneck underneath, but that is purely because of my own style preference. But that's about it. That's all I'm going to say. I would probably like raise up the neckline if I was a more advanced knitter, but because this is a test knit, I didn't want to do too many changes to the pattern so it doesn't affect the original design. Um, I will say I did make the sleeve, I think, two inches shorter than intended. It was supposed to be five inches, but with my body type, because I'm short, uh, it wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna work. So I did two inches instead of the five. And I tried it on. Sleeves are great. Sleeves are great. Everything's gonna be fine. And I just have to finish this sleeve. And it's mostly short rows anyway, so oh, it's taking a little longer than anticipated. I don't know about you, but short rows are something that I think is absolutely magic because I honestly have no idea how they work. Don't know exactly how they make all those really nice clean edges. Don't really know how to do them effectively, but when they happen, amazing. Lovely. That is hopefully going to finish by, I want to say this week. I want to say this weekend I'm going to power through and finish it, but it all depends on what I'm doing today, tomorrow, and Saturday. This is how much I have left of this ball. Uh, I have about two and a bit more skeins of the Drops Extra Fine Merino. If I have enough, I might make a beret to match with this because I think it'll be so cute. Kind of French. Parisian maybe and if I don't have enough yarn I might make a headband using the Augustines. I forget what the headband's called this the Augustines headband and it looks so pretty. I just wanted it to be a bit more romantic and I've noticed a lot of people are actually making their uh, Daphne top in pink because I think it is a very romantic looking um, pattern. I think that's that's what everyone is going for and I a hundred percent understand why. Oh, I keep it in this little bag that my mom made. And I think I have like three different yarn bags. Mm, okay, let's move on to another work in progress. I'm hoping I get to finish very soon. And this is a self pattern. This is something that I am not using a pattern on. It is a commission and it is a hat. Most people usually ask me to make hats uh, because if they ask me to make sweaters, it is very expensive and I completely understand. This one is supposed to be like the Steve Zizou from like who is played by Willem Dafoe. I saw the hat. I was like, okay, it looks like a basic knitted hat with a like a pom pom on top. So I just bought some yarn from Hoko again, a bright red and I know most hats especially the ones that I researched they did like um 
like a ribbing but I didn't really want to do ribbing so I'm gonna hem it so this is what it looks like see the knit you see the pearl it's just about done so once I fold it up it's gonna stay that way and it's for a average size adult so I kind of know the measurements for a hat I know it I just need to finish it I need to power through and finish it which I'm hoping to do by this weekend or at least by next week if I have a photo ready I will share it if not tune into the next podcast next week by subscribing that is something that's very new to me but hopefully if I like how it looks I might design a pattern on it because I want to get into pattern making I'm like I want to design stuff I'm getting inspired by all these amazing designers and I, I want to design some clothes myself which brings me to the next thing I'm making which is a self pattern as well and it is a dress I'm still on the hem of it I haven't fully finished it but I'm using the kite gut and funfetti cake I adore the colors and originally I was going to make the Alexandra dress with it but I was thinking about it and I drafted up some designs that I think were a bit more feasible for me to make uh, something that was a bit more modest um, that had maybe a higher neckline and poofy sleeves so that's the idea with this dress I have to though figure out all the stitches and the casting on and because I'm using cotton and I know it doesn't have a lot of stretch and it's quite big I think I have to redo it so that is I wouldn't say it it's an issue but it's definitely something I have to think about because I'm bad at math I just I need to figure out the dimensions and everything uh, I know the length that I want I know where the neckline is going I just have to put it all together write it down and put it into an outfit basically but because this yarn is iron weight I hope that it won't take too long to finish it's not something that has a deadline for me maybe I'll give myself one in February because, you know, I, I want to make a dress. I want to make something that is nice for me and my sister. But I also want it to be the best that it can be. Although, I need to stop having that idea. I think, you know, what you love has to be with its flaws and all. And perfection is not always the best thing, Bash. <laughs> yes. So that was my finished objects and whips of January. Uh, we shall see if all the whips that I have showed you in this video will be finished by this February. So annoying. So let's move on to the yarn acquisitions and what I got from Wool Warehouse because I also bought some tools and notions as well. So yarn acquisitions. I bought one two skeins from Wool Warehouse and a couple of more from uh, Hoko and I think you saw in the last week's um, video but let's move let's start at least with the ones that I got from Wool Warehouse and this is the Cascade Yarns Heritage Prints 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon looks like this it's number 106 Ren in the colorway and the reason why I bought two is because I am making socks for the first time in five years. I haven't made socks in a long time. And the last time I made socks, I was really proud of myself. I thought they were so cozy. And then I promptly lost one of them and I haven't worn them since. The reason why I bought two is because one is for my partner. The other one is for me. So I want to make matching socks for Valentine's Day. I think that'll be really cute for both of us. Um... Socks is something that I really wanted to get into, but I never ended up getting into. I made like one pair, but I know that it is something that is utilitarian, more so than clothes, I'd say. And, you know, something that's quick and easy and a bit more mindful for a lot of people. I would like to get more interested in making socks, which is why I bought these if I like them. I will probably continue making more. If I don't, then 
my partner has a nice pair of socks that he can wear and I will hopefully make myself a pair with the extra ball of yarn. Also because I don't really know like exact yardages especially since I'm making one for my partner uh, and they've got big feet. They've got bigger feet than me. I gotta work on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, go work on that. At least, though, it is machine washable, even if it's a cool setting. Uh, probably tell them to hand wash it. But I've worked with Cascade before. I made the, um, what's that one called? The Diaphanous Raglan by Jesse May Designs, I think, two years ago with using their, like, sock yarn. Because I, I honestly, at that point, I didn't really know, like, the differences between yarn weights. I just hit the gauge. But that one was really soft. It's really comfy. I uh, haven't worn it in ages though because I don't actually wear the color green a lot. <laughs> I don't think I've worn green since 20... Yeah, when I took that photo 2020. So now that I'm understanding a bit more of my style and like what I wear, especially hitting my early 20s, I know that I like creams and browns. And for socks, I think they'd be really cute, especially when they're striped. Ah. Let's move on to what I got at Hoko. And I'll be honest, this is unbranded. Uh, like I said many, many times before, we don't really have that great of a selection here in Brunei. So we work with what we got. This is the exact yarn that I used for the orbital jumper. Uh, and as you can see, there's a big bee outside. And it's quite thick as a design. I don't know what's the difference between regular cotton and milk cotton. I honestly don't. But I needed something that was going to go really well with this color initially. But then I realized I kind of didn't like it that much. I like this color, which is a mohair in like a sea green. So I went back to Hoko and I got this color, which is this mohair. And I thought gray and pink went so well together as a pairing. I think it looks really cute, it's lovely, but would I use this yarn again? That's the question. Um, maybe for hats, especially for babies, actually no, I don't think babies can use this. Maybe like bags or something that needs stretch, so maybe hats for regular sized people, uh, but I don't think I would continue using this. As for the mohairs that I got, I've got this one and I also got this one so the same mohair two different colors i can't read this but i can see that it is 25 grams of mohair and yeah that's about it that's all i know about it it is quite thin and it's quite thicker as a strand but i have a few ideas on what i want to make with it i have a idea for a raglan top a sweater that is also in development i have a lot of projects that i have in development where honestly i should really just sit down and really think about the calculations which is something that i have to do especially when it comes to being a more advanced knitter and wanting to design patterns and things i have to i have to start doing that i do i think that's all the yarn that i want to talk about let's move on to the tools and notions I'll be honest, oh my god, I didn't realize what Notions were, because I thought Notion was like the app that people use on their laptops, which I, I use, but Notions is also like small things that you need for knitting. Did not realize that was what it was called. So let's talk about the tools that I got. All of it from Wool Warehouse, because honestly, one, cheapest, shipping's great, perfect. So I got... Let's start with the needles. This is the Knit Pro Symphony Wood Short Needle Tips in the size 6 millimeters, And I also got the interchangeable knitting cables in size 80 and 100. The reason why I got 80, even though I had one, was because it broke. Uh, my 80 centimeter interchangeable knitting needles broke. I'm sorry for the crinkling. This little portion broke out of the, the wire. And I kind of pushed it back in with tweezers and it still works, but I'm just worried that it won't hold all the designs for long. So I thought, why not get the 80 centimeter and the 100 centimeter I got because I am making um, the dress 
and I need it to be with a much longer uh, knitting, knitting needle cable. I need it to be a longer cable so it could fit everything because currently 80 centimeters is still too short and the needles are just popping off so I got this and I got that and the reason why I got the six millimeter needles is because I'm making a sweater or at least I'm planning on making a sweater that needs six millimeter needles so just got it. So the next thing I got as well is the Knit Pro Zing 25 centimeters 2.5 millimeters. I know what I'm good at and what I'm not. I have no idea how to do the magic loop technique. I have tried for years and years and years, especially when I'm making socks, never worked out, always confused. But a lot of people do recommend using uh, small needles like this. I know that Well Love Knits and Lisa on YouTube, she, she uses it, so I decided okay you've convinced me I'm gonna buy the needles because they said it's so much help and because I want to make socks for Valentine's Day we're buying some needles we're buying new needles I need to expand my knitting needles case because I'm currently using one that my mom made I might have to ask her to make another one just for me and my other knitting needles especially those that are interchangeable because currently I'm using an old makeup brush holder not the most sanitary thing. I think that is about it from me. I think I've talked way more than I anticipated. So thank you for listening to me blab and talk about all the things that are currently going on in January. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I hope you are feeling good about yourself, most importantly. And I will see you next week with another video. If you like this video, do like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you later. Bye.